Hi everyone, and welcome to Specimen Spotlights at the Harvard Museum of Natural History. My name is Eric and I'm an intern here in the education department. Today, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite specimen in the museum, the South Island giant moa. When I first visited the Harvard Museum of Natural History, I had a school assignment to visit a museum, find an object and observe it for 20 minutes without reading anything or talking to anyone about it. I was drawn to the moa because of its size. It reminded me of birds that I was familiar with, like an ostrich or an emu, but the skeleton was considerably taller than both. So I thought, okay, it looks like a bird, but there's no way this thing could fly. It's way too big. I continued looking at the skeleton and was shocked to realize this bird doesn't even have wings. The South Island giant moa is an extinct bird that used to roam the South Island of New Zealand. I was right, the moa is closely related to ostriches and emus belonging to a group called the ratites, along with other flightless birds like kiwis, rias, cassowaries, and extinct elephant birds. Many of these birds grow quite large, but the South Island giant moa was the biggest of them all. Because none of these birds can fly, I would have guessed that they inherited flightlessness from their common ancestor. But there's a catch. DNA tells us that moas are most closely related to tinamous, a much smaller bird that can still fly. That means it's likely that the common ancestor of all ratites could also fly. Instead, the moas, ostriches, rias, and other flightless ratites lost the ability to fly independently of each other. Besides tinamous, all of these ratite species have wings that are too small for flying. The moa went one step further and stopped developing wings altogether. Wait, okay, so the South Island giant moa is the largest ratite, does not have any wings, but is most closely related to a small bird that can fly? How did that happen? Well, the large ratites have undergone something called convergent evolution, where they have evolved similar body plans separately rather than inheriting them from a common ancestor. This helps explain why the moa looks more like an emu or an ostrich than it does its closer cousin, the tinamou. This is also why we need DNA to fully understand evolution. Sometimes animals that look similar aren't as closely related as we'd think. I used to think of convergent evolution as something that only happens to distantly related organisms, like how birds and bats both evolved wings. This was the first time I had heard of convergent evolution happening in a related group like the ratites. For the moa, its island lifestyle is likely responsible for the way it looks. Flying takes a lot of energy, and on an island like New Zealand, the moa did not need to fly in order to get food and avoid predators. For other large flightless ratite species, there was something about their environment that made flying, frankly, not worth the energy. Instead of flying, these birds were able to direct their energy into other purposes. So that makes me wonder, what happened first? Did the moa get so big that it took too much energy to fly? Or did they stop flying and then start growing bigger and taller? We may need to look at a few more specimens to answer that question. Next time you visit the Harvard Museum of Natural History, try spending some time observing a specimen before you read anything about it. You may be surprised at what you discover just from looking.